Good morning, Lionhearts. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Today, we are taking off on a tour bus, and we are doing a special Patreon sunglass vlog for you, Janet Matthews. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Uh, building in front of us, rather ugly. That's called the Ark. Can you see the Ark there? That's no lovely as the Ark. That's probably what not a lot of people call it. probably tell the first part of our tour is here in Oxford where Oscar Wilde went to school as well as many many of the British Prime Ministers have went to school in Oxford as well I'll show you excuse me where the original Asmolean was okay but say just get your bearings Asmolean yes the uh, martyrs uh, memorial in Jericho station's courtyard if you visit Jericho station where it's very similar. Now, I'm scrupulous of the university students will tell you that this is a steeple of an underground cathedral. Yes, and if you give me 20 pounds, okay, I'll show you the interior of the cathedral. Anyone want to give me 20 pounds? Come on. There's a cemetery right in the middle of town. It's funny, when Oscar Wilde went to school here, he prided himself on never going to classes. He just thought it was like a big waste of his time. And then when he would have the exams, he would ace all the exams. He mainly just wanted to go to Oxford to say that he went there and because he felt like he was a man of the world then. I love seeing all the purple flowers everywhere. Not necessarily today. Nicholas Ridley and Thomas Cranmer. They were all burnt at the stake in the 16th century as part of, I mentioned, Mary I, persecution of the Protestants. That is where they were executed. Now, to be burnt at the stake was a particularly nasty one. Nice scene right there is where they were burned at the stake. If they liked you, they built a big fire, yes, with dry wood. And then consequently, the dust and the would kill you before the fire. It was green wood. He said she was known as Bloody Mary. Time to rise, and you'd actually be a very, very painful and slow death. Not a very nice thing to happen to you at all. Because they did not stop. <coughs> Our guide said basically, if you want to be like a world leader, just go to school here, and ten years later, you're probably going to be one. <laughs> this is Balliol College. This is the second oldest of all the colleges. Okay, you can see it is uh, established in 1263. It's named after a gentleman called John Balliol, who was actually the father of a future king of Scotland. Now, all inside they have quadrangles. They also have chapels as well, because obviously in the old days the colleges were religious establishments. <coughs> now, this one you can see is open if you want to go inside. Uh, what happens? I go round in a big circle, ladies and gentlemen, and then you, you'll end up back in this area. This is trendy. The population of uh, the university here is about 21,000 to about 23,000, depending on where they take. Only 400 students inside Trinity College. This was the original Ashmolean Museum, named after a gentleman called Elias Ashmolean. Now, Elias Ashmolean actually left the university, a cabinet of curiosities, lots of weird things, Norris or Radius of Quote, is one of them. This comes out of the uh, the father of Pocahontas, and the Pope of Lanterns. And also inside the museum today is uh, Einstein's uh, blackboard. Oh wow, they said they have Einstein's blackboard in there. They said it's also the oldest public museum in the world, opening in 1683. Wow, I wish we had time to go in there and check out his blackboard. The equals MC squared board. So ladies and gentlemen, this building is called the Sheldonian Theatre, named after a man called Gilbert Sheldon, who is a former fellow of the university. Now this is used for matriculations, for graduations. It was not used for theatre until 2015. Underneath it, in the, original, in the old days, was the Oxford University Press, the oldest publishing company in the world. But when the, there was things going on inside the theatre, the compositors of the publishing company could not do their business. So consequently, they needed a building of their own. So they built this building here, the Earl of Clarendon building. See the Clarendon here? All these beautiful statues on the top. This was built primarily in those days for the Oxford University Press. Wow, check that out. He's asking for Harry Potter fans. Come to the front. Come to the front, Harry Potter fan. It's okay. Because underneath my foot, I have something that might interest Harry Potter fans, okay? Now, 
unscrupulous guys will tell you that this is where J.K. Rowling, yes, got the inspiration for the scar on Harry Potter's forehead. Now, I'm not an unscrupulous guy, ladies and gentlemen, so I cannot tell you if that is true or not, but when I take my foot away, for those of you who know about the scar on Harry Potter's forehead, then tell me if you think this is where she got her inspiration from. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, I say unscrupulous guys will tell you, yes, yes, that is, those. You can see, if you're a Harry Potter fan, that does bear a little bit of a resemblance to the scar, yes? If you know nothing about Harry Potter, I apologise, okay? But, I say, just know, he has a scar on his frog, which is very similar to that. <laughs> Our guide's got a pretty good sense of humour. <laughs> First film, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Uh, for my American friends, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah. You don't have philosophers in America. That's probably one. <laughs> this is from the first Harry Potter movie. He said it's called Divinity Hall. Okay. So, uh, you know, everyone knows the film when uh, Harry has his daughter taken with Voldemort. Yes, he ends up in the hospital. The Divinity Hall was the hospital. Ah, uh, this was the these, hospital. Uh, buildings, you know, like the colleges, they all have big halls. Uh, if you know the Hogwarts Hall, that's the great, that was based on the Great Hall of Christ Church College, which is down uh, the uh, high street. A bit further. In, the, in the hall, but they've made a complete hall. If you've been to the Warner Brothers studio, it is, a, it is based uh, yeah. on the Christ Maybe. Church College Great Hall. And one of the towers that goes up, one of the, uh, one of the, um, of the staircases was used in the film. Great architecture here, just unbelievable. How many great thinkers would have went to school here. And he basically says that Oxford College itself is broken up into many different schools. So most people would consider themselves going to the school less than Oxford itself. It's a copy of a copy. The reason the one in Venice was copied by the students in Cambridge. And because Cambridge had one, they decided to have one in Oxford as well. As I said, it's called the Bridge of Sighs. The residents say it's the Bridge of Sighs because they say they, you can hear the students sighing on their way to their lectures. <laughs> now this is actually to join the two quadrangles of what's known as Hartford College. Now Hartford College was discovered in the early 2000s to be the most obese of all the colleges. Fire when Harry's fallen out of everybody. Uh, Draco Malfoy's up the tree, yes, and then Mad Eye Moody turns it into a ferret, yes, you know that bit? That tree is the one at the end there. See so a new polished cloister? That is the tree that Draco Malfoy is actually sitting in the tree. Now the body of library is a working library. So they do ask for the This is the library. It is the largest university library in the country. Underneath our feet and around us, we have over 11 million books. Now they are spread out on 120 miles or 190 kilometers of bookshelf. This is known as a legal deposit library, which means that they can request a copy of any book published in this country. If they were to have every book, this library would be expanding at a rate of three miles or five kilometers per year. He's telling us that through that door is the Duke of Humphreys Library from the first Harry Potter movie. It's where he puts the invisibility cloak on. He was also saying if you take a look at the architecture in here and how it's laid out, you can definitely see where Harry Potter got some of its inspiration for the set design. <laughs> What a beautiful town. Cliff Camera. It is not named after Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. Uh, a man called James Radcliffe, who is a former science fellow of the university. Uh, he has a lot to do with science. There is a Radcliffe Observatory Quarter, and this is called the Radcliffe Camera. Camera is Latin for room. This is the science part of the library. So if you have any science queries, then you come here. He just said there's a popular series here called Inspector Moore, and this was Lonsdale College up here. And as an Oscar Wilde fan, this was just an essential to come do, you know? See the town that he 
went to school in. Door knocker. That's what a brazen eyes was. Uh, lots of famous people have come here. Uh, David Cameron, yes, previous Prime Minister of this country. Uh, my Australian friends, Malcolm Turnbull, yes, previous Prime Minister of Australia. He also went here. Uh, William Golding, who wrote Lord of the Flies, yes. Uh, and also uh, Michael Palin, yes, Monty Python, yes, you know him. Okay, now this gully, you wouldn't necessarily want to be standing in that gully in the sort of maybe the mid 17th to 18th century, because in those days there were no sewers. Yes, so you do your business in a pot. When the pot was full, you went up to your first floor window and you threw your pot out into the streets. Yes, and uh, it ended up in the gully normally. And uh, if you weren't rich enough for pots, to have a pot, it was said you were so poor you didn't have a pot to piss in. That's where that expression comes from. You used to get fined if you had mess outside your house. Uh, John Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's dad, was famously fined for having a mess outside the front of his house. So you get up very early in the morning and you sweep the mess next door. <laughs> uh, poor people would go to the posher areas and they would have uh, buckets and big voluminous cloaks. And if they saw somebody who needed the toilets in the area, they would go up to them and say, would you like to use my bucket? They'd uh, put the bucket down. Uh, the posh person would sit on the bucket. They'd wrap the cloak around them. They're doing their business in the pots or in the buckets and then they give them a penny, yes, spend a penny, and they take the bucket away. The gully. Remember I said on the coach when we had the teaching of the uh, Protestant priests inside Jesus College and this one behind us is called Exeter College. Now Exeter College has also had about some famous students, J.R.R. Tolkien, yes, Lord of the Rings, yes, wow. Alan Bennett, very famous playwright, uh, very famous play called The History Boys, which is based a little bit on Oxford, uh, and also Richard Burton, yes, and a famous actor, uh -huh. yes, also went to the Taming of the Shrew. The Oxford College store. The flags have a big gobby in the window. They have lots of Harry Potter memorabilia. You also notice they have the, the official mark of the University of Oxford. So they have all the official college and the university stuff inside here. You have about three minutes. Yeah, they've definitely embraced Harry Potter here. Bruce is here. Gotta buy a few postcards, some cool merch. Mr. Bean and the Beatles. So I've now seen about four shops all on the same street that all have Harry Potter stuff. So it's needless to say a lot of people come here just because of the Harry Potter connection. So our time here at Oxford is pretty much done. Let's go hop on the bus. Mm -hmm.